Hello and welcome to Books of Blood. My name is John and today I've got another book review for you guys. So today we're going to be talking about The Amulet and this is by Michael McDowell. Now a little history about the publishing of The Amulet or the publication history or whatever. This is Michael McDowell's seventh novel. However, Excuse me. However, it is his first published novel. It was published in 1979, uh, and this release, or the one, the edition that I read, was published in 2013. And there is a um, an introduction uh, by Poppy Z or Z Bright uh, at the beginning of the book. I did not read the introduction. I don't like reading the introduction before I read the book because I'm always kind of afraid this going to kind of sway my opinion of the book that I might read something that either is going to uh, it's gonna it's gonna make me feel biased toward my opinion of the book so I didn't read the introduction I'm, I'll go back and read it later anyway this book takes place in 1965 or around the night around 1965 in a town uh, called Pinecone Alabama all right so the beginning of the book you have the prologue and you have this guy named Dean and he is at this place called Fort Rucka and he is on a rifle range and he's teaching all these young recruits or whatever uh, how to shoot okay and a horrible accident occurs all right and it leaves him disfigured and it leaves him pretty much pretty much and I hate to say it like this I mean I don't want anybody but it leaves him pretty much a vegetable I mean he's pretty much just pretty much brain dead all right Okay, so cut to that. We're out of the prologue and everything. He is now back at home with his wife. He's all bandaged up. He's back at home with his wife. He's back at home with his mother. Uh, his wife is uh, Sarah, and his mother is Josephine. I will get to those two in just a moment, all right? Actually, I'm going to talk about them right now, okay? So, Sarah. Now, Sarah works at the munitions plant where the rifle that blew up in Dean's face where this particular rifle was made all right she works there with a friend of hers Becca they work on an assembly line so the rifle comes down the line one person does one thing to it another person does another thing to it Sarah does her thing to it Becca does her thing to it and then it's sent out and it's you know ready to buy, ready to shoot, ready to whatever. All right, so there you go. All right, so that is Sarah. Sarah is 20 years old. It mentions in one part of the book she's about to have her 21st birthday. Sarah is 20 years old, and she is already saddled with a husband that is pretty much, for all intents and purposes, useless. He is not going to do anything but lay there in his bandages. She's going to have to change him. She's going to have to feed him. She's going to have to do all this stuff for him. And then there is Dean's mother, Jo, or Josephine, or whatever you want to call her. We're going to call her Jo, because you got to remember this takes place in the South, and people love to shorten names in the South. I should know. I am from the South, all right? Um, yeah, and because I am from the South, I got called John Boy a lot. Don't anybody ever do that, please, all right? Anyway... Let's talk about Joe, okay? Have you ever known one of those people that they don't ever have a kind word to say about anybody? They're lazy. Uh, they want to blame everybody else for things that happen that there is circumstance beyond anybody's control, all right? And they're just not a very likable person, all right? Take that person that you know and multiply that person by 10, and you probably still aren't going to get close to the way Joe is. Joe is just an absolutely horrible woman. And, I mean, she takes out her anger. She takes out her 
I don't know, frustration, her blame, and all that. She takes it out on the entire freaking town of Pinecone, but she especially seems to take it out on Sarah. I mean, Joe, it, Joe is the kind of person who is so lazy that if there was a refrigerator right beside her full of Coca-Colas, she would be so lazy that she would not open that refrigerator door herself. She would call Sarah in from another room to make her do it or to have her do it. That's the kind of person Joe is. Y'all remember that song from back in the 60s or 70s? I think it was the 60s. Ode to Billy Joe. You know, about Billy Joe McAllister jumping off the Tallahassee Bridge, but you never re they never really explain why Billy Joe McAllister jumped off the Tallahassee Bridge, and don't get me started on the movie, okay? I, I know why. It's because that woman, Joe, was coming up behind him. He just couldn't take it anymore. He had to jump, all right? That's how bad this woman is. All right, so I'm done, done talking about Joe. Anyway... Let's talk about the amulet, okay? All right, so one of uh, Dean's friends comes over to pay his respects, to pay, you know, to fight, hey, say, hey, I'm sorry all this happened to you, you know, and, and uh, I hate that this happened to you and stuff. Well, Joe gives his friend, gives Dean's friend this amulet, all right? So this fellow takes it home to his wife. He's got five kids. And what this amulet does, or what it seems to do, is it basically brings out the, the rage and the anger in a person. And it just multiplies it by ten, okay? So, first things first, we have this fella and his wife and their kids. And the wife has the amulet, amulet and she can't find, she's trying to find where to unclasp it, but then next thing you know, it seems to break and and somehow or another it's around her neck and this rage comes over her and the next thing you know her her husband and all of her all their kids are dead in a fire i mean they are burned up as somebody finds the amulet and they pass it on to somebody and anybody that ends up with this amulet they end up dead um and this is all basically to the satisfaction of Joe. Like I said, you got to remember, Joe blames everybody for her son's accident. All right? She has got a mat on for this town. She is going to make everybody in this town pay. And she is just conniving enough and snot enough to where it doesn't matter if it's a husband and a wife that have, that have killed each other or if it's a husband and a wife and five children that have killed each other, if they are dead because of this amulet, it's, oh, it just makes her happy as a, happy as a, as a dead pig in the sunshine. Let's put it that way. All right. So Sarah has got her suspicions about this amulet. She's thinking there is something really strange about this amulet. She questions Joe, uh, Joe about it. And, of course, Joe gives her these vague responses and these smart-ass or snide comments, you know. And, and she tries to, to make it seem like Sarah doesn't care about Dean, doesn't care about his well-being, and like she knows everything that's going on with Dean, even though he's just laying there and he ain't doing nothing. The only way, the way they know it, the only way they know he's alive is because whenever Sarah feeds him the food, you know, he takes the food into his, he's, you know, bites down on the spoon, takes the food out of her, out of, off the spoon. You know, that's the only way they know he's even alive, all right? But uh, Joe will say stuff like, well, you're his wife. You ought to know what he's thinking. It's like, how do you know what he's thinking? You don't know what he's thinking, you know? But that's just the way Joe is, all right? So, I pretty much told you pretty much the premise of this book. You got the amulet. It does, you know, anytime, anytime somebody gets a hold of it, bad things happen. You know, Sarah suspects Joe knows more about this amulet than she's letting on. Joe keeps telling her lies and half-truths and all kinds of stuff and just, just being a nasty person, all right? 
So, now i got to tell you, did I like this book? Yes, I did. And the thing that gets me about this is I cannot believe this is Michael McDowell's seventh novel, but his first published. I'm thinking, how bad do these other books have to be that they did not get published? Because this was excellent. I, I gave it a four out of, I mean, I gave it a four out of five, all right, if I'm going to rate it. I gave it a four out of five. Um... One thing I loved about this book is Michael McDowell, and this isn't the first book I've read by him. I've read Cold Moon Over Babylon, Blackwater, and uh, Katie. But when Michael McDowell is writing, uh, and the Elemental, excuse me, but when he's writing about people in Alabama, he's writing about people in the town of Alabama, uh, and about the town of uh, Alabama towns, he just takes you right there into this town. I mean, he and the way the cadence of the way people talk, the way they say certain words, like they don't say, you know, I'm I'm going to go to the store. They they say I'm going to go to store. They say gone instead of gonna. You know, so you, he's just got the town and the people down just absolutely perfect and that it adds even more to the suspense adds even more to the to the horror that's going on with this amulet with these people dying and he does not hold back on the gore i mean this is a pretty gory book some of the things that happen to people in this book uh one fella um goes on a rampage ends up falling into a into a hay baler uh another girl um uh, one woman drives an ice pick into her husband's skull while he's brain while he's sleeping, uh, and then she gets her throat cut. Another girl gets her pretty much her head cut off with an electric fan, you know. So he he doesn't hold back on the gore or the nastiness. But I think the thing that got me about this book that I enjoyed about it was, like I said, just the way people talk and the way he. Um, just gives you this feeling for this small southern town, you know, and the people living there and the way they are, all right? Uh, one thing, was when I was reading it, um, uh, metaphorically speaking, and with the way Joe seems to blame everybody for what happened to her son, um, I kind of wonder if, metaphorically speaking, um... Uh, if, if she wasn't a representation for, like, whenever... Because, yeah, remember, this is 1965. The Vietnam War is going on. And, you know, but I just wonder if it wasn't metaphorical for, like, who do you blame when these people come back from... These soldiers come back from Vietnam and they're not the same. They either don't come back or when they do come back, they're not the same. All right? You know, you got PTSD, uh, all that stuff. And they're just not the same. Who do you blame for that? You know, do you blame everybody? Do you blame one person? Do you blame the government? Who do you blame? So I just wonder if there wasn't that little bit of a uh, little bit of metaphorical stuff going on with that part right there. But overall, the amulet is a must read. I mean, I, I'm highly recommending this book. It's not perfect. That's why I didn't give it a five star rating. But it's damn good. All right. So there you go. That is my review of The Amulet. I uh, hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, take care and stay scared. Bye-bye.